so we got new toys um, I ordered another two of these because well I actually ordered three in total but first I just ordered this one then thought well I might need more in the future so just ordered more, <laughs> two more um, and this thing this is the ultrasonic transducer <laughs> pretty simple it's well a piezo crystal I guess in the middle and two metal well not exactly plates it looks like it's just a thin sheet of metal on each side except for this side part that seems to be more massive kind of so there you see a tiny uh, transition here but yeah no clue if this comes out on video so I don't know what exactly it's made of but I will solder some wire to it and see if I can make a chooch, you know? Um, <clears throat> I will probably just apply a voltage to it and then see if it does make a sound. And I hope it does, because if it doesn't, that would be quite sad. But hey, it just got banged up a bit. You see, there is a, uh, a little ding there, and metallization has come off, but I hope it doesn't stop the thing from working so what else do we have here these two and I noticed a little difference between them not the parts I mean this one is a bit off but that's okay um, the difference that I noticed is on this side and I don't know if you, you can see that on video but these solar joints are a lot more dull than these ones you see here these are all shiny mirror finish <laughs> but these are all dull like the ones that I get with my left free solder back here so <laughs> it seems like this one was made with leaded solder and this one with lead free and well there's no indication on it that it's different well it seems to be a different manufacturer because you see all these holes here there is no solder mask on them uh, but here they're all closed off with solar mask, so it's probably two different manufacturing batches Maybe even a different manufacturer. I can't make out any uh, Other differences than that Yeah, it really just looks the same so probably someone got his hands on the plants and manufactured it differently I guess the one with lead solder is probably the cheaper one because uh, when I manufactured my PCBs, uh, lead free was usually more expensive. But yeah, other than that, there's no difference between the two. I didn't even test them yet, I, I will do that shortly. Um, but yeah, so project for today, I hope, will be hooking this up, seeing if it works. And this thing here, this contraption. So what we have here is a fan, two heat sinks, and a Peltier element, and you probably see where that is going. So um, I thought about uh, you can wait. Something is making noise here. I don't know if that's me speaking or no, that's coming from outside. It seems to be a bird. Okay. <laughs> that threw me off a bit. Um, so the Peltier element creates uh, a potential difference when you apply a temperature difference. So usually you use this to cool things down. You pump uh, electricity into it to create a temperature difference. Um, but you can also use this to... Um, well drive a fan off the heat that comes in here or from temp temperature difference between the two. Usually you would apply heat down here and then cool this up here. But in my case I want to do it differently. I want to put this uh, in cold water, this in warm air and see if I can get the fan to chooch. But well, it's, yeah, I don't know <laughs> if that will work. Let's see. I would just just gonna put a step up on it that that's gonna work <laughs> we sure will get the amperage out of the thing so yeah that's the, another experiment just soldered two uh, jumpers on here so I can plug it in here see what happens 
and then I also have to kind of hold it together. I mean, it has holes here, but I don't really have anything to uh, screw it to. <laughs> that sucks. So I would probably really just pull a wire through here and or a string and just tie it together. Maybe that will work. But yeah, let, before I really do it, uh, put it together, I would just test if the Peltier element will even supply enough uh, voltage or power so we can make use of this thing here. Um, if I manage to get this out of here, okay. Nothing broke yet, nothing broke. So we will measure DC voltage. Let's see what we have open circuit. So well, I hope you can see that. Oh, I just turned the camera. Oh boy, so smart. Yeah, great. Stop it. Actually, come on. Yeah, you can't see that. I hope this just stays there. If, if it doesn't, I will first I have to take the plugs off the probe. And I have the feeling, okay, this, this should work. Let's see. Let's see what does this. Negative. This. Positive. And, uh, well, we see we get 2 millivolts. No, actually, well, actually a bit more. If it jumps up and then goes back down. Um, well. How am I going to heat this up? Um, I don't know what, don't really want to torch it, but, but I guess I have to torch it. I don't know if you can even see that this camera always turns off. Yeah, you can't really see that. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, this is upright for you, right? Okay, so this has to stay here, and this goes there, and this goes here. I'm gonna get my torch. Got. Actually, I just noticed I put the camera on the microphone side. Did you even hear me? Well, I guess I put it that way. <laughs> it will will be okay. You can read that, I guess. Just turn your head. So I will try to heat that thing up. Burn off all the dust that's in there. Well, it should be warm enough now. To produce a voltage difference. Positive and negative. And we get oh well it's up wrong side. Okay, so we get um, 70 millivolts. This is totally not enough to drive a fucking fan. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see, this one, this should now fix the voltage problems. Yeah, what do you see, 60 millivolts? Yeah, I don't <laughs> think this will work. But oh well, I will put some uh, compound on there and see if it works. Okay, so, yeah, see you in the next video segment. Okay, so, I played around a little bit with this, and yeah, I also tried this thing that just doesn't work <laughs> I don't know if the just the temperature difference is not high enough but doesn't even put out a volt so I guess that only works for higher temperature differences like because there's this thing is something similar exists for stoves so you just put it on your stove and it blows uh, air into the room uh, but I guess that just works because you have like 20 degree air in the room and like hundreds from the bottom so and here's just a few degree difference so let's look at the ultrasonic thing um it works it is a piezo element it did not blow up yet and i even got it to kind of work um the problem is this has a resonant frequency that it works at and in the listing it was said it would be 40 kilohertz but that's not really true <laughs> so it has to be tuned um, and I do not have a, f a function generator I mean my oscilloscope has one built in but I have never used that before <laughs> so
So yeah, I will try get getting that to work for uh, like I don't know a few minutes. We'll invest in it. If it doesn't work, uh, yeah, I gotta think about something else. Um, the Arduino's timing is is a bit wonky. Like the library that I wrote gives me wrong timings for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe just the crystal here is so off that it uh, doesn't give me the right timing. Basically, I tell it to wait, uh, well, let's say 10,000 nanoseconds, and it waits like 800. At least that's what I feel. So we get up to 50 kilohertz when I tell it to wait. Uh, no, wait, is it too slow? I don't know. Uh, where's my code? There's my code. Okay, I said 8,000 nanoseconds to wait. Uh, that would be quite a high difference. <laughs> let's see. One, 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 by eight. Yeah, 125 kilohertz. Well, actually, then it's it's actually tr it's actually right because I had half of that kinda uh, in my thing, and I used that two times, I think. Yeah. I mean, something something is off. I don't know what is off, but something is off. So, it's just a little bit off, but I guess it, it's right then, so, if you do the math. But, it's extremely hard tuning in on the frequency of the thing. And the reason is, I have to reprogram the Arduino each time I do it, because when you work with these uh, timings, um, it gets quite complicated to wait for input. Um, of course, I could try it and just check for input every 10 seconds or so, but it's, that's kind of annoying. Because you want to turn the knob and find the thing, and you don't want to turn it a bit, wait 10 seconds, turn it a bit, wait 10 seconds. Um, so yeah, i got to figure out how my scope works, and maybe I will not figure it out. But yeah, I will tell you. Okay, so... It's the next day. I didn't have the nerve to film another segment yesterday. So I did things. First, I tried out my oscilloscope and it indeed can generate frequencies. But not fast enough for uh, the transducer. And also I think it is actually kind of based on an Arduino. Can you read this? It has like the A0, A1 and all this stuff, whatever you usually see on an Arduino. So <laughs> I don't know what it's in there, with, but I think there's actually an Atmega 328 in there. But yeah, doesn't matter. So this is not fast enough. Okay, next thing I tried was, um, yeah, this, this is a 555 timer. Um, it kind of works. It can generate the frequency, but um, this is a 500 kilo ohm um, pot, and it's sadly not a linear pot. It's a uh, what do you call it? A logarith logarithmic, yeah. You know what I want to say. Logarithmic scale. There we go. So. That's extremely hard to adjust in the high frequencies. Like on the right here, there's like 16 kilohertz, and on this uh, side is like 100 to 200 or even more. And this is like currently at the 40 <laughs> uh, mark. So yeah, you see the scale is really annoying. I tried it the other way around, even worse. Um, yeah, I need a linear pot. I ordered some pots now, multi turn. 10k and I hope I can work with that if not I might have to use a different circuit than a 555 timer I have op amps a lot of them maybe I can use those um, and also I actually I will need an op amp because um, currently I'm just switching it on and off so it's just on off on off and I want to reverse the polarity because that's why I bought this driver otherwise I could just use a transistor to switch this um, so yeah I want to invert this 
so I need an augment to invert the signal because I don't think I have anything else that could invert the signal. Um, yeah, what else I wanted to say about the signal. You need an exact frequency to get this to resonate. So this has a resonant frequency and when you hit that uh, it suddenly ramps up in power to no end. Um, so usually when I just drive this over the range of well 0 to 40 kilohertz it just pulls like the same 70 uh, milliamps so basically not much more with than without a load. But as soon as you hit the resonant frequency the, the current shoots up and I manage to tune it up to uh, 300 milliamps and this is like a teeny tiny uh, part on the bandwidth of this thing that resonates. And I read up on it on the internet and yeah, people said like it's in a couple hundred hertz is uh, where the resonant frequency is and it's pretty hard to set this with this uh, logarithmic pot and yeah that's stupid so I will get my multi-turn pot. I will of course try other things till that arrives. Maybe I can make it work that way. Maybe I mean this thing goes from 16 kilohertz to 100 something. Uh, that's quite a lot, uh, quite a wide bandwidth. Maybe it can manage to uh, make it smaller, <coughs> so it will not have such a high bandwidth, because I really just need a few kilohertz um, of bandwidth, not hundreds. But it's kind of hard with this and the 555 being stupid, so maybe I just use a um, an op-amp oscillator that uh, you can see on Learn Electronics. He made a, uh, a little oscillator using an op-amp, so maybe I can use that. But yeah, for now, yeah, I I'm can cannot make much progress other than try to uh, drill a hole in here with this. So I guess that's what I want to do next. <laughs> well, I don't want to do it because it, it's dangerous as fuck. Um, and it will probably ruin the tool, but I will never use it anyway because we have drills for that. But yeah, we will see how that plays out. So, yeah, that's basically everything I want to say now. So, yeah, bye-bye.